Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to welcome you back to Dominion Online. And no, I'm not black. Just for the record. I am, however, Capital G, your LP here for today. And we are going to continue through the tutorial stages. Tutorial stages. I keep saying the word so fast, it sounds like tutorial. Like the R's before the O. Uh, we're going to be doing stages 3 and 4 today. Um, before I begin, I'd like to clarify a point that I made in the previous episode. I mentioned that the Dominion card game was not as popular as it used to be. And I'm going to explain why that is real quick. Uh, what happened is that while Dominion launched this new style of game, uh, it has been often imitated and expanded upon. So now there are dozens if not hundreds of other deck building games where you build your deck over the course of a game. Many with a bit more depth shall we say to the game, more depth and more strategy. And because of this the minion is not played as often as it used to be. And the minion's not that old of a game either. I think it's uh, it was it was, re it was released in the mid two thousands. I'll get the exact date for you soon. So in the meantime, let's play. And Tutor Tom is like, you have learned much, young liege. As you learn more, your lessons will become shorter. So yeah. And the new card that we get to play with in this particular uh, stage of the tutorial is the woodcutter. The woodcutter, and I'll show it to you soon, gives you an additional buy and two extra coins. So, these little uh, gold coins here, gold, silver, copper, are not the only way to produce cash. And it'll also show off the fact that we'll be now allowed to buy additional cards, if we so choose. And here they're showing us that we can overpay for a card, like we have four coins, so we could conceivably buy, buy a four core, uh, a four coin card, but he's, he's uh, forcing us to buy the silver. Now, I guess really the only drawback to the tutorial stages is that it's a bit of a uh, bit of an automatic thing, like the game is telling you how to play, but it is a tutorial. Excellent, my liege, you have drawn your woodcutter. Play it now. It's like, very good, now your two coins will be waiting for you when you go to the buy phase. So we get the two coins from the card that we just played, plus the gold. So two, three, four, five, six, now we have six. So buying the woodcutter is almost the same thing as buying a cop buying the silver. The only difference is the woodcutter uses up our action for the turn. So then we have our six, we get our gold. Uh, we can still use your extra buy to get a copper for free. You can buy additional coppers for free if you really wanted to. And there are some strategies where it would be a good idea. Um, but we don't have that in this game, so we're not going to buy coppers in turn. Well done, capital G. Use your new wisdom to defeat this opponent on your own. Remember, the game ends when all the provinces or any three stacks of cards are gone. I wish you luck. So, um, for this stage of the tutorial, there's only two provinces. Again, as we uh, as we go further in, the, the number will eventually go up to eight. In the meantime, five coin. Uh, let's play our treasures and at five, I'd rather have a village. It's always good to have one or two villages handy. So I'm just gonna stock up on villages. This way, next time around, I can get smithies and start really reeling in the gold. Actually, in fact, here's where we can take advantage. Village. Woodcutter. So now we have a total of, after we play our treasures, we have a total of eight. So we can conceivably buy two smithies, or we can just buy our province. Um, in reality, there's no reason not to buy the province, so let's go for it. I could choose to buy the extra copper if I wanted to. No. Usually you can only buy one card, but thanks to the woodcutter, it's now... That number, that number of buys goes up. 
three, four, five, six, seven. Play treasures. Gold. You've been drawing a lot of money, so this game's gonna go very, very quickly, I'm sure. I'm sure. Not this time, though. Uh, play treasures. Uh, I'm sure, buy silver. In these early stages, no, there, there's no real need to uh, think too hard about it. So, play our treasures, and we have five. So, watch what's put. So, I'll show you the two buys here. I'll demonstrate it properly now. Let's buy silver, and let's buy an estate. Like that. Normally it's one or the other, but in that scenario it was both. Three, six, eight, nine, ten. Play our treasures. So nine. We can only buy one. We can only buy one card because we don't have our woodcutter, but that's okay because this is the card we're buying. Game ends. All the provinces are gone. We had them both. Twelve. So two provinces for twelve. Four states for four. Sixteen points. Simple. So now we move on to stage four. Now, young lead, you will learn to smite your foes. Yes, because this introduces one of the more interesting cards of the, uh, well, at least of the basic set of the game. I say basic set since there have been eight major expansions released for the original game. But I'll go more into depth in the future on that. In the meantime, let's talk about the witch. We got a f we started with five copper, which is very lucky. So we'll play our treasures and pick up a witch. The witch is, a, is what is called an attack card. And what that means is that it'll do something that can mess with the other players in the game. So let's buy a witch. In a future turn, we'll be able to play the witch. And now, Tutor Thomas is saying not to buy the estate. It's actually sound advice. It's the only thing we can pick up at two cop, and it's not really worth it. Use the witch to hex and vex your opponents. They will get extra cards, and they will get nothing but curses. We will get extra cards, and they will get nothing but curses. If you look here to the right. We have this new purple card called Curse. Um, curses can be purchased for, for no money, and they're worth minus one victory points. Like the green cards, they do absolutely nothing for you when they're in your hand. And you really don't want these. So what the witch does, the witch allows us to draw two cards, and then each opposing player will take a curse and put it in their discard pile. So we get our two cards, and the curse goes to Tutor Thomas. Your enemy was forced to take a curse card. It is a useless card that costs you victory points at the end of the game. Never take one if you can help it. Now we have to use our newfound knowledge of witches to finish the game. So let's play our treasures, and we're playing on our own now. So, what should, we, what should we do? Let's get a second witch. We're gonna stuff his deck of curses. And he's picked up a smithy to try and like, draw past them. That's really the only way to deal with curses at this early stage. Now. We, the way we've been uh, playing through the tutorial so far, we've been getting like one or two new cards in each stage. Um, in a game, in the basic game of Dominion, there are actually twenty-five different cards that could end up here, and usually you pick ten. You will see that very, very soon. Of course, in the meantime, uh, I drew both my witches. That's not so good because I only have one action. So I'll play my one witch that I can play, and then I have to play my treasures. Four, four, four. Village.
and he bought an estate, so he's just slowing his deck down even more. Let's play our villages, hope we get a witch. No. Let's play our treasures and add four what we want. Well, with two villages, in theory, we should be able to be able to like combo it off with smithies and witches. In theory. So in the meantime, let's get a silver. Let's start improving our gold. We haven't done that yet. Nice! We have a village and we have two witches. That's very strong. So village. Witch. Village. Witch. So village lets us play two extra actions. So one, two. Village lets us play ex two extra actions again. So one. And we didn't draw any more, but we have six money. So the obvious thing to do here is pick up a gold. So now we have our own smithy. He's been drawing smithies, which helps him, but... It's not, so, it's not as great for us to get a smithy without a village, because we have a lot of action cards on our deck now. So I'll pick up another village. The more villages I have, the more likely I'd be able to... Get a big draw off of them. Three, four, five, and a witch. So let's play a witch. Six, seven, eight. That's good for a province. So play our treasures. Eight coins. Buy province. Yeah, so now we've got our two villages here. Village one. Village two. Which So we didn't get a whole lot out of that. That's okay. We we got through so we got through uh, some of our victory point cards, so we should see fewer of those in our next hand and indeed we do. Now we have to make a choice. We have four in our hand right now. We can either play the witch, just draw two cards, but we stuff Tutor Thomas for the curse. The other option is to play the smithy, draw three cards, and hope we get enough money to buy the province. I'm going to try and end the game here, so let's play the smithy. We got it. Play our treasures. We have our eight coins. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight province. That should give us the win. And it does. Fifteen to seven. Of course, Tudor Thomas plays terribly. He's telling us not to buy states just so he can grab them all himself. He purchased, he, in addition to the three he started with, he purchased seven of them. Probably in an attempt to get our curses, so. But, that's what, uh, that's what it is to play an introductory level stage. So with that in mind, uh, that'll be it for today. Next time around, we'll do stages 5 and 6 of the tutorial. Again, we introduce some new cards and new mechanics. And I'll go into a bit more depth on the uh, on the game. Game of it in and of itself. Have a good one, everyone. See you next time.